Welcome to the first episode of CHS Wired. I'm Brooke Deal. And I'm Hayden Thomas. Stay tuned for more on the Area 51 raid, new faces at CHS, and our guest speaker whose head is in the clouds. fortunate to have a guest speaker, but motivational speaking is not his only talent. Chaz brings you an inside look. Sergeant First Class Dana Bowman recently spoke to the students at CHS. Junior Colton Manchester organized the event after seeing him jump at the firearms opening at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. He's, he's really got an awesome story and he, it's a, he's a really awesome, interesting guy, but then also he went through a lot of hardships, so um, with his inspirational speech, I think it really is going to be kind of an eye-opener for a lot of the kids in Cody. I think it's something we really need as kind of youth nowadays. It's not, not always the happiest environment to be in. I am retired of the United States military. Originally from Northbridgeville, Ohio. Joined the military when I was 18. Worked with different forces. United States military being a ranger team, halo team, scuba team, sniper team. And I was on the Gold Knights Army Parachute Team and also Special Forces. Being in the United States military really inspired me to be a parachutist. I started out in the 82nd Airborne as a Red Beret. Last Friday night, he jumped at the football game and delivered the game ball. If you get a chance, check out haloforfreedom.org. It's pretty special, and I look forward to coming back to Cody. Cody's a wonderful place. This has been Chaz Cowie with CHS Wired. <laughs> so, we'll be right back. Every night, I can hear the thunder. The footsteps. And the screams of the children. I'll never forget this tourist season. Do not mention that accursed time. Tourist? Where? <laughs> what was it like driving during tourist season? They, they, well they showed up in a, in a swarm, you see. They're all around, everywhere. Ravaged all the stores, all the stores. And there's, there's so many of them, you can't even imagine. I hate tourists, they lose all common sense. <sighs> they terrified any animal they came across. It's like they'd never even seen a deer or a, or a rabbit or a fox or a wild guinea pig before. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, have you noticed all the new faces at CHS this year? I have. Drew Trotter brings you more. Cody High School has bumped our numbers in students this year. We have acquired 43 new students. Let's sit down with a few of them and see what they have to say. I moved here from Houston, Texas. Uh, um, Peyton, Colorado. Uh, Switzerland. Michigan. Oh, Mount Pleasant, Utah. South Texas, Corpus Christi area. I'm from Taiwan. I moved here from Jacksonville, Florida. I'm from New York City. Absorky, Montana. St. George, Utah. New York. I moved here from Grass Valley, California. We sat down with them and asked them what the biggest difference is from where they lived to their new home route. It's probably tied between the people and like the mountains. This place is huge compared there. Probably everything, but if I had to choose something, the people are nicer here. Uh, there's mountains here. <laughs> It's cold. <laughs> uh, in Taiwan, we don't change our classroom, and here we change our classroom 
every class. Honestly, it's the ocean. Like, I haven't seen a body of water larger than like a lake here. <laughs> it's way bigger. Like the most I had in my class was 14. Uh, it's a lot less hot. This is definitely not the desert and the school's much smaller. It's way, way, way smaller. Um, there's way less like everything. This has been Drew Trotter and Ethan Hope from See Just Wired. If you see these friendly faces around the hallways, don't be afraid to stop and say hello. Have you seen some new visitors at Cody High School? You mean the... the... The ones who must not be named? Ugh. Oh, yeah. Just the thought of them gives me the chills. Justin takes a deeper look into Cody High School to study the scariest animals on the planet, the freshmen. This is going to be a wild one. Hello, I'm Justin Wigand, and I'll be giving you tips and tricks on how to survive the freshman. For the first tip, try to avoid the freshman stairs. In fact, just take the elevator. And then you... Your best bet would probably just to be to hide in closets to avoid any interaction with freshmen. If you have a class with a freshman, just drop it. It's not worth it. Justin, this is your eighth request for schedule change this week. You're in danger of not graduating. And lastly, I cannot stress this one enough. Don't make eye contact with freshmen. Never. Be careful walking down the halls. You never know what or who will be lurking around the corners. And now to Emery Johnston at the sports desk. Welcome to the sports desk. I'm Emery Johnston. the insight on our Cody Bronkin Phillies teams. Hey CHS, it's Jaslyn Walter, and this is your Bronkin Philly update. Let's start out with swimming. The girls swim team is doing really well this season as the majority of them have already qualified for state. Their team is really positive and have a very close bond with one another. Many of the girls are setting new PRs and racing better than last year. The girls hope to continue to reach new PRs throughout the season. And now for our Bronx football team. The boys are undefeated and they've been playing really well with each other this season. The boys have learned a lot about how they are as a team and how they play together. Their goals for this season are to win every game and make it to state. And now for our CHS golf team. The golf team started off the season really strong and slowly declined. The team went into their first game with clear minds and now they have all the logistics and are focusing on simplifying the game. Their goal for conference was to get third and they came out fourth. Next is our Phillies volleyball team. The volleyball team has started off their season really strong with freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors all playing varsity. They continue to play their very best at every game and are having fun while doing it. Their first tournament in Riverton went really well, only losing to Lander. The team has great chemistry, making it easier for them to play together. The girls hope to improve throughout the season and make it to state. Now for our cross country team. The team has had a great season so far with plenty of PRs at the beginning of the season and many hard workouts. Many of the team members set new PRs at their first meet in Billings and have been running pretty average since. The team hopes for the season to pick back up and they believe that their girls can win state this season. Now let's talk about tennis. The girls tennis team has held a really strong record dominating their first conference play with an undefeated season. 
Heading to state today, the girls' team is currently ranked number two behind Kelly Walsh. Jumping to the other court, the Cody boys' tennis team did not earn a top placing during regionals, but Captain Dylan Romero anticipates they will have a strong showing and do a lot of damage this week at state. For updates on how the team does throughout the weekend, check out our Twitter at CHS underscore Wired. Keep it up, Bronx and Phillies. We all wish you luck. And now to Coach Hayes for this edition of Coach Advice. The biggest advice I would give on balancing sports in schools is to be really organized. You want to be a student first and an athlete second. But they're both really important and being your best it takes organization and hard work. I'm a firm believer in being the best at anything you choose to do. So when you're a student or you're an athlete or whatever you choose, you should do your best. I mean, if you're going to be there, you might as well put in the work to be the best you can be. Thanks, Coach Hayes. And now back to Brooke and Hayden at the news desk. Thanks, Emery. The new grouping system at Cody High School has piqued interest. Bailey Liebert brings you more. So Kagan came in and did professional development for our staff. Um, every year our staff goes through several days of professional development and this year um, well, the high school chose to use Kagan as our professional development. I like having groups. I like kids to interact with each other because the more they talk about math, the more it sinks into their brains. I feel that pods are bad for the students because instead of being in straight rows, everyone's around the room, so trying to look at the board is like kind of a maze. For most students, it's good. For some students, it just gives them another reason to be off task and they stay off task. In teams of four and the right questions, the right activities are presented, the engagement levels go way up. So that's the goal, is just to increase engagement. I'd like to know the student's perspective on it. I don't think the new groups are beneficial. What are your thoughts on the pods? Share your opinion on Twitter using our handle. Have you heard about the Area 51 raid? Well, duh, Nathan survived it. Really? Let's yeah. hear his crazy survival story. It all started on the morning of September 20th. I found myself in Area 51, searching for my very own alien. We barely made it out alive, but eventually made it back to Cody, Wyoming. To give him the normal experience of a teenage kid, we enrolled him in CHS. taught him how to dance with the utmost flow. Bust down. I taught him how to eat only the finest of American delicacies. I taught him how to dress fire. I taught him how to act normal and now we can blend in with the rest of the students daily at CHS. Wow, I can't believe that actually happened. The bonfire for homecoming has always been a tradition, but nobody really knows what goes on to making it possible. Maddie Rhodes brings you more. What goes into making the bonfire event possible? Well, believe it or not, we had to start planning this thing back in June. Um, I have to fill out paperwork with the city for both the bonfire and the, to get permission back in July and approved it in August. But uh, then we got to call the fire department and get permission um, and for ask them to be there. From the council side of things, the, is one acquisition of the pallets. Uh, Ethan Hope and I went around and talked to businesses, talked to people on the phone so we could get places that were willing to give up their pallets and then we just went around and picked them up in the two weeks prior to this. Contributions by the fire department to the bonfire or they have a sign up all our volunteer all our firefighters are volunteers including our chief they will make the determination on whether you can burn or not bonfire on thursday nights 
and the game was Friday. A few years ago we had a problem with um, weather on Thursday night and we couldn't do the bonfire. We had too much wind and so we ended up doing it after the football game and we had lost the football game and that didn't work out too well. So we decided to move the bonfire to Monday and so we do it on Monday to get everyone excited for homecoming week. It really starts the week off with a bang. Uh, the bonfire, I think, is a really special thing just because of the, the sense of tradition, the sense of everyone getting out here, standing around a fire when it's cold and dark to get ready for a football game. Thank you to Student Council and to the Fire Department for making this event possible. The homecoming game against Jackson is this week. Stephen Connor brings you more as to what's been prepared for this week's homecoming. My name is Summer Holman. I volunteer for a lot of events, and I like to plan a lot of uh, plan a lot of those events. Um, I'm on a couple of committees. I help out a lot with royalty, so I make sure that all the corsages are made, and we've ordered the crowns already. So we obviously plan all of the dress-up days. We plan the bonfire. We do the dance, which is a blast. We help out at football games sometimes. And then we'll play on the parade, which is big. It's a lot of fun and we'll decorate windows. We do the dress up days all week and we'll go around and count for each class just to spice it up a little bit with some competition. At the end of the week, we do the homecoming dance. For me, it's a way to celebrate our school spirit. It's a way to get everybody excited for school and feel united and just cheer on our football team, our volleyball team. It just brings everybody together. The game against Jackson is at 6 o'clock sharp tomorrow. Hope to see you all there. The remodel was proposed in an effort to make the front entryway at Cody High School consistent with the entryways at the other buildings in Park County, School District Number 6. So several areas were remodeled. The front office, the teacher's lounge and several conference rooms as well as the old teacher's lounge turned into a classroom for a teacher. So kind of three main areas were under construction. The remodel's main purpose is to provide security. Visitors now go through two sets of doorways and must check in with the secretary. Additionally, the activities office received the same remodel. So I think it has helped as far as the safety goes, having the window the new window, I believe, makes visibility better because it was just a solid wall before. We have closer access to Officer Wortham if we do have an emergency instead of running across the hall and checking to see if she's actually in the office, we can look in her office to get her assistance. You know, I think the space is just redesigned now to be a little more functional for teachers. The, the teacher's lounge opens up into the bigger conference room, so in those terms, the other space was usable, but this space is a little more functional. I think the new offices look great, the new teacher's lounge looks great, everything's really functional. The front vestibule is more secure now, so that was the goal of the entire project. So I feel like overall it was a major success. Thank you for watching this episode of CHS Wired. I'm Brooke Deal. And I'm Hayden Thomas. Stay tuned for our next episode in October.